All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, shall we call the Belvedere City Council Committee of the Whole for May 8, 2023, to order? If the clerk will call the roll, please. Albertini? Here. Burton? Here. Fleury? Here. Frank? Here. Freeman? Freeman is absent. McGee? Here. Mahal? Mahal's absent. Porter? Porter is absent. Prather? Here. Snow? Here. Seven present. Okay, thank you. Under public comment, uh, the only thing that we have is uh, Chief Shadle has some dates that he wants to share with uh, the council and the public. So, Chief? Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to let everybody know that the Police and Fire Commission approved the swearing in of probationary firefighter Jason Jankowski. It's going to be on May 22nd, it's a Monday, at 10 a.m. in the council chambers. And then also on Monday, June 5th, Firefighter Thornton is going to be promoted to lieutenant, and Lieutenant Swanson is going to be promoted to captain. So I just wanted to let you guys know those dates and times now that they're finalized. And um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right, uh, under public format, forum, uh, moving on, we have none this evening. Reports of officers, boards, and special committees. Item one, building planning, zoning, unfinished business. We have none. Item two, building planning, zoning, new business. Uh, Mr. Countryman, could we get an update? Item A. Yep, thank you, Mayor. Uh, for the month of April, we issued 144 permits for a value of just under 12 million. Um, revenue 145,000. One hundred and twenty five of those were residential, nineteen were commercial, uh, one new house. Um, some of the progress in town, as you can probably see, the grandma's restaurant was torn is being torn down for the Dunkin' Donuts, along with Murphy Oil. Um, Taco Bell is is moving along. Just the dispensaries at drywall. Uh, we issued a permit for Midwest refrigeration for industrial court. We currently closed 12 property maintenance issues. We have 30 in progress, and I'll entertain any questions. Any questions for Mr. Countryman? Anyone? Okay. Hearing none, thank you, Kip. Uh, item B, Planning Zoning Department update. Uh, Ms. Delrose? Okay. Hi. Uh, so there is no public hearings in April. It seems to be um, busy one month, slow one month on cases. So in May, we have the final plat for Crosslink Business Park, which is for Project Yukon, and a special use for video gaming that will be going into the same building as the dispensary. Um, per the annexation agreement, they're allowed to have that gaming. It is not part of the 40 uh, limit. Um, there was the temporary use review that you guys had. Site plans are starting to pick up. Kunis is doing the expansion, and uh, Project Yukon's been submitting some preliminary stuff. Uh, downtown is picking up on some uh, new businesses, so new signage. I just sent out the facade letters today, so I'd expect quite a few downtown projects to get going in the next couple months because of that. Um, Belvedere Historic Preservation. Uh, met and had dinner with the Route 20 guy. Uh, so he's been posting some more Belvedere stuff on that page. Um, he's been also teaming up with a couple other nonprofits, uh, using them as mentors uh, while he's restructuring the, restructuring the association, but he has a lot of good ideas. Um, working on Heritage Days, as always. Uh, for those that don't know, the county has a new planner, Jesse Roberts. Um, so I went to lunch with her um, and have been communicating with her quite frequently. She was the city county planner. She trained me, so we have an excellent working relationship. Uh, so it is kind of nice to have um, that partner system back in the two departments. Uh, reviewed some studies, and that is about it. Okay. 
Any questions for Ms. Delrose regarding any of that? Alderwoman Frank? Thank you, Mayor. Can you just repeat who is the new city or the new county planner? Jesse Roberts. When she worked for the department, it was uh, her maiden name is Elwanger. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gina. Uh, item C uh, in your packet, uh, I had a, put a memo regarding uh, the Belvedere um, Historic Preservation Commission, uh, the appointment of Kim Coniglio. Uh, the Belvedere Historic Preservation Commission is comprised of seven members, each serving a three-year term. Kim Coniglio is requesting to fill the vacant seat with a term ending on April 30th, 2026. Ms. Coniglio has experience organizing events and fundraisers and has lived in Belvedere for the past 27 years. Uh, my requested motion would be a motion to consent to and approve the appointment of Mrs. Kim Coniglio to Belvedere Historic Preservation Commission for a three-year term ending uh, April 30th, 2026. Could I have a motion to that effect, please? Motion by Alderman Snow, second by Alderman Fleury. Uh, any questions regarding uh, that motion on the floor? Alderman Brereton. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so is that the same, Kim, from Growth Dimensions? It is. Oh, okay, I was uh, assuming it was, and then I'm also assuming that that's not a conflict of any type? I would say no. Um, she doesn't, uh, as far as I know, we had talked about that. She doesn't have any uh, votes that uh, or support that would be conflicting, is my understanding. Correct. Um, Mr a per diem payment like plan commission does Status and the facade grant that the city has, that is nothing that Growth Dimensions is involved with, would have. Um, so I will say I have not had a full commission in over two years. So uh, <coughs> Kim would fill the last vacancy. So for the first time in two years, the commission could be at full status, which I'm excited over. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's any conflict of interest, especially regarding any any monetary, uh, any vote that would cross any of the boundaries uh, regarding what she does or with growth dimensions regarding the Historic Preservation Commission. I know that was one of the things that I had asked as well, Alderman. And uh, it's hard to find individuals uh, to make some of these appointments, but um, I don't believe, uh, unless the city attorney uh, wants to enlighten me on something that I don't know, but. Uh, no, there's no conflict. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, any other questions regarding the motion on the floor? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of the appointment of uh, Kim Coniglio to the Belvedere Historic Preservation Commission, please say aye. 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 If there's any opposed. Okay, motion passed, thank you. And item three, public works unfinished business, we have none. Item four, Public Works New Business, <coughs> Public Works Update. Mr. Anderson, good evening. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> at the back of your packets tonight, there's a certificate in there, copy from the Illinois Department of Public Health. So just FYI that we have um, uh, been certified for our, our, the previous, from 2019 to 2022 for uh, keeping up with uh, compliance requirements for the Illinois Fluoridation Act through the Illinois Department of Public Health. And the other information I have for you tonight is you may have seen some activity, work activity at the Mainline Railroad Crossing on Appleton 
relationship with the Union Pacific Railroad and the crews, their crews have started the installation for crossing gates at that location. Uh, those were uh, required through the ICC and that is being paid for through the state and through the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, so up until such time as, as a grade separation is approved and constructed, they will, that crossing itself will be protected by gates. I inquired about the the industrial spur, uh, the next siding to the crossing, the second crossing on Appleton to the south, and they indicated that the requirements for that crossing were not met. So the gates will only be installed on the main line across Appleton. That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Anderson? Alderwoman Frank. Thank you. Um, Director Anderson, when do you think that they will start putting those gates up? Well, like I said, the, the foundational work has started. I haven't got any information from the railroad as far as further timeline. It's all according to their schedule. Um, so I would guess probably in the next 30 to 45 days. Thank you. Alder, Alderman Fleury. Thank you. Uh, I had a conversation this weekend with a family member who also works in city business, but I was wondering, are we part of the Illinois Public Works Mutual Aid Network? Are you familiar with that organization? I am familiar with it. I would have to go back and look at my paperwork to see if we're actually part of that. Okay, maybe it's something that if we are or aren't, maybe we could talk at a future meeting. Um, I, just the initial research just showed that it would be $250 to join in an ordinance, but then it's kind of like with the fire department where Obviously, it could have been probably helpful when we had that tornado and storm and kind of using each other. So I don't know if that'd be something beneficial to us, but again, you know, not to put you on the spot tonight, but something maybe we could talk at a future meeting and see if it would be beneficial to the city here. And we kind of have that sidebar already, maybe not formalized with such an agreement formally, um, but if there's anything that we need, we can reach out to the neighboring communities uh, for assistance, and they likewise, they reach out to us if they need something from us. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Director Anderson? As uh, Director Anderson had mentioned, um, we had applied for federal help um, with a grade separation. Um, and uh, at that time, which hopefully we will get it, uh, hopefully uh, Stellantis uh, the freight traffic that they've once had there becomes uh, an issue again, so that that certainly makes our case uh, a lot stronger for uh, the grade separation and then also having that made from a two lane to a four lane. Uh, but um, at that time, I suppose, then uh, they would have to, uh, you know, the lighting that we have installed there then they'll determine what happens with that but uh, for right now that's what we'll have uh, thank you thank you Brent um, moving on item B is uh, intersection review Grover Street and Beaster Drive uh, Brent <coughs> excuse me in your packets uh, the memo for intersection review for Grover and Beaster um, the, currently the intersection is unmarked uh, traffic volume uh, indications are both streets have an ADT of 200 vehicles or less. Uh, the police department has recorded three accidents at that intersection over the last five years. Uh, location of the intersection is a res residential neighborhood with typical pedestrian activity. There are no sight distance limitations noted. Uh, based on the three accidents in the last five years uh, and the IDOT's manual uniform traffic control devices, I would recommend that traffic on Grover Street yield to traffic on Beaster Drive. If the city council concurs, then the ordinance will be required to implement this change. Okay, could I get a motion to that effect, please? Motion by Alderman Prather, second by Alderman uh, Albertini. Alderman Albertini, thank you. <laughs> I've got a learning curve again. I wanted to say Alderman John, but uh, I guess there is no other John here, so I'd have been okay with that. All right, uh, Alderman Albertini, uh, any questions uh, regarding the motion on the floor? 
All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 If there's any opposed, motion passed, thank you. And then item C, Mr. Anderson. Next up, uh, memo on your packet is the 2023 MFT street overlays. Um, the list of streets are presented for you uh, in the memo. We have $975,000 budgeted for the street overlays. And this is a list that uh, makes up that uh, dollar amount. I would recommend approval of the, of the proposed list for our MFT street maintenance program for 2023. Can I get a motion to approve, please? Motion by Alderman Frank, second by Alderman McGee. Uh, any questions? Uh, of course, this will be back, so um, if you take a look at them, if you have any uh, further thoughts on it, see you in a week then. If there's no other discussion, uh, all those in favor of the motion on the floor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed, thank you. And item D, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, memo in your packet. Uh, we had the bid opening for our Irene Hockey Water Main Extension that we're doing as part of the General Mills project. And uh, I would recommend approval of the low bid from Northern Illinois Service in the amount of $706,478.50 for the Irene Hockey 16 inch water main extension. This work will be paid for from line item 614. 810 4510 connection fees and DCO grant funds. Okay, motion by Alderman Snow. We have a second by Alderman Prather. Any discussion regarding that? Motion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of the low bid for Northern Illinois service, uh, please say aye. 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 If there's any opposed? Motion passed, thank you. And item E, Mr. Anderson. Uh, again, memo in your packet. Uh, construction engineering proposal for the Irene Road realignment project. Um, attached to this memo is a proposal from CES to complete the construction engineering for the Irene Road realignment project in the amount of $105,200. The construction engineering includes staking, inspection, and documentation for the TARP grant, EDP grant, and DCEO grant. The construction services cost is 7.3% of the awarded construction contract for this project of $1,432,009.73. Therefore, I would recommend approval of the proposal from CES in an amount not to exceed $105,200 to complete the construction engineering for the Irene Road realignment project. This work will be paid for from capital funds with reimbursement from grant funds. Okay, could I get a motion to that effect, please? Motion by Alderman Albertini, second by Alderman, was it McGee? Thank you. All right, uh, any questions regarding that motion? Okay, hearing none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. If there's any opposed, motion passed. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. Item five other, we have A, uh, <coughs> Fire Department Station 1 window replacement. And uh, I guess uh, the chief has put a uh, memo in here regarding uh, the price of the windows. Um, I would entertain a motion to utilize a low bid uh, regarding five winter, Window World to replace five windows at Fire Station 1 at a cost of $6,252 to be paid out of line item 01-05-220-6110. Can I get a motion to that effect? Motion by Alderman Fleury, second by Alderman Snow. Uh, Chief, uh, I'm sure what a bargain uh, those, those are or what a price difference it was with those. So I'd talk to you a little bit about that. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to mention that I typed the line item incorrectly. It's 6010-6010. Um, other than that, everything else is uh, good. Window World also, during Chief Heiser's, when he was chief, had donated three windows and installed them in Fire Station 1. And as you can see from the other bid, bid they are significantly less as they gave a uh, firefighter discount as well for those. Thank you, Chief. 
Is there any questions regarding that motion? Uh, motion uh, Alderman Frank. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so I have a question. Um, we did replace windows on the second story, right? So these are the lower level? No, these are the second story. So we, we had, Chief Heiser had opened up some windows on the one side of the building and installed them. Um, these windows for replacement are actually, they're not terribly old, but they are, they were really, really inexpensive and they're all inoperable. Uh, a lot of them have stickers on them that we put on a few years back that say don't open because they just, they come out when, and you can't open them or utilize them or clean them or on the days that it's nice, you can't uh, open them for fresh air. So this was something that they were hoping to do last year, but if you remember, we had the emergency replacement of the air conditioning unit, which um, basically, and a couple other things that wiped out our station maintenance budget. So this will allow us to have windows that work again. So they weren't replaced or they were replaced and they only lasted a couple of years? I'm not sure the exact time frame that the windows, I apologize for not having that information for you, but they're, they're not, they're not, they're more than a few years old, but they are, I can look that up and get the exact information of when they were previously replaced, but they've, they've been inoperable for at least a few years. Any other uh, questions, Alderman uh, Albertini? I have a question. I'm looking at your proposal for this, the quote actually. Um, the one thing I don't see on here in the question is, does these windows come with any kind of warranty? I can reach out to Window World and, and get the information on you or information on that for you, but I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, the reason I ask this is because you mentioned that these other windows that you have in now are fairly cheap and they don't work. Well, I just wondered, did we have any kind of warranty on those windows that where we could maybe make them work instead of having to replace them? And if not, well, then I'd like to know what this warranty would be or if there is even one to be had with this quote. I can check on those. Those are honestly really great questions. And normally I would have much more time to prepare something or a request like this. Um, those windows are definitely outside of any warranty. Um, time flies by and I, I can't remember exactly when they were replaced, but I'll get that information uh, to you as well. But for what I can tell you is I can tell you they've been broken for a couple of years now and um, I will double check on the warranty from Window World. The ones that the Window World had replaced in the front for us are, are working in our, our, our better quality windows. Okay, I'll look forward to the information. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I just actually yeah. jumped on Window World's website. It's a limited lifetime warranty. It means probably just repair and replace, not labor. The first five years, I think it's complete replacement or repair, and then after that, I think it diminishes by 20% every couple of years. I'm not sure, but that's what I thought I saw online for it as well. But um, and then after so many years, it's it's really void. It's you know $20 you get per window. Right. But uh, I just wanted to see because it'd be nice to get some kind of warranty on them if we're going to spend money to put them in. So. So the vinyl parts are lifetime, mechanical parts are lifetime and not labor. The glass is only going to be for um, the seal. And let's see, labor is only for five years after installation. And two-year labor guarantee on all vinyl windows series less than 3,000, so it's it's really a, probably a two-year labor warranty. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Snow? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious as to um, the quote from Rockford Auto Glass being at 24,000 for only four windows. It just seemed 
Um, did they really know what they were looking at or were they trying to get out of doing it? That I'm not sure. I know sometimes when you deal with companies and they find out and they give a quote for a municipality or a fire department, the, the quotes generally run quite a bit higher. Um, Window World obviously doesn't do that. And, and then uh, Alderman Albertini, the windows that are broken now were not done by Window World. So I want to just to make, make that clear, it wasn't their windows. Um, so I will double check before we spend any money. And I, Dan, Lieutenant Drawl, I apologize, Lieutenant Drawl uh, is in charge of all the stations. He's, he's very, very thorough. And I'm sure if there was warranty or money from the installer to be had that he would uh, let us know. And so I will find that out for sure. And then Alderman Snow, will you repeat your question again? The price differential. That was. Thank you. Uh, the third vendor actually didn't even respond or, or come back out. So I don't know if it's just as busy as they are, but they knew the specifics of what they were looking to do, and it was an extremely high price. So we didn't even, when we re-quoted everything to get a recent quote, we didn't call them back because their pr original price was so high, but they would have known the scope of the work, and the price just came back that high. Okay. All right, uh, Alderman Frank, and then Alderman Burden. Thank you, Mayor. This might be for, um, um, for the finance director, um, it says it was budgeted for repair. So would that be subtracted off the amount that we would pay Window World? We actually have in the current budget 12,000 for the replacement of actually six windows. So we have more than sufficient money set aside in this budget for, for this work to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Burden. Thanks again, Mayor. Just real quick, so these windows did in fact work like work at one time and now they don't, is that right? A absolutely. They were working and operable and um, just through every single Wednesday we clean all the windows throughout both stations and all the apparatus so we open them up and, and, and clean them and, and just with the general use that they became uh, quickly inoperable and um, here we are. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Alderman Albertine. Chief Shadle, these windows that we're gonna be putting in there are of a higher quality than the ones that are in there now. Now, and we should expect a longer life, to, you know, longevity out of them. I would expect that from the windows that we had Window World replaced before, those are, those are good windows and they're operating fine. I, I would expect that Lieutenant Draw uh, wouldn't get the Cadillac of windows because that's not how we operate, but I, I'm sure he would get something or quote something that was of good quality and would expect a, a longer lifetime than uh, what we experienced with the other vendor. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Alder Woman Prather. Um, Chief, is, is this a fire safety hazard? No, ma'am. I know I had uh, talked with the chief and I saw the bid uh, for the four windows when we had one for the five and the price uh, disparity in the price and uh, you know I thought wow somebody's either got a lot of work or they want to eat big steaks and uh, so um, I think um, with having a local um, having a local um, company uh, that is well known here locally. I would think that uh, that would be advantageous. Probably, if we would have had them in the first place, maybe that would have been a good call from the beginning. But uh, here we are, and uh, they they're not operable. Um, so, for the amount of money that we have here uh, in front of us tonight, um, that's a motion on the floor. Any other questions, comments? All right, hearing none, uh, the motion then is to utilize a low bid for Window World to replace five windows at Fire Station 1 at a cost of $6,252 to be paid out of line item 01-05-220-6010. Uh, 
Uh, if there are no other questions, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 If there's any opposed, motion passed. Thank you. And uh, also, uh, item B, Chief Shadle. Thank you, Your Honor. Item B, you guys may not recall, but when we talked about selling the mini pumper, we talked about how it was our ALS response unit anytime that we have more than seven people on duty. We split the crew at station two to two on the engine and two on the alternate response vehicle. Ideas couplefold. When we have an extra vehicle out, we're able to respond to more calls uh, faster before the shift commander or myself uh, run a call. Usually those are like EMS calls or back-to-back -back calls. And um, But then when we have the higher manning, also it allows us to reduce the wear and tear on the, on the engines. And it's more economical. So when I had originally talked about selling the mini pumper, I had explained that we would have to invest some money on 160 is a Ford pickup truck that is uh, extremely low, low miles. It's a 2016 or 17, so it's uh, fairly new. And I had estimated the amount to outfit it and to get the slide out trays to hold the equipment because it's um, heavier equipment and it has to be custom and commercial quality. That it would, And then to get the emergency lighting and marking, I estimated shooting from the hip at around 50,000. So um, this obviously, we got some quotes, we got some, uh, now these are estimates of course, because as we each part, once the top is put on, then there might be some different customization or different wiring harnesses or different bracketry. And then um, with the slide out, once it's actually known exactly where all the equipment's going to be, that's gonna be customized to fix our equipment. Right now what we did in the meantime is we actually just took the back seat out of the truck and we put our ALS gear uh, where that back seat was. So that's how we've been doing in the meantime. We waited until the, we could get the budget finalized to present it to you guys. Um, so we have the quote for those things. And um, we, again, with it being specialized equipment and commercial, there's only certain vendors we're gonna use. So we, we couldn't like get three quotes for everything. We just got quotes for vendors that either someone else has used in the area or are um, able to actually do what we're looking to do. So what the request is, is not to exceed 16,500 uh, to be paid for out of the capital fund. Again, it was an approved expense and the estimated costs are there and what the money will do is purchase a commercial topper with toolboxes. It will purchase a commercial customized slide out bed extender. It will provide all the uh, lettering but also on the back of it will be the required chevron for emergency vehicles and then uh, additional emergency lighting. And the request is motion to outfit 160 for ALS and water rescue response not to exceed 16,500 to be paid out of the capital fund. And one more thing I might mention is that we're going to be able to also dual purpose this vehicle. Right now, our 140 is a 2003 um, ambulance and we have our, all our water rescue equipment on that vehicle. So with this customized slide out tray, we're going to be able to utilize that for ALS response and water rescue response and it will save us from the need of replacing 140 for a dive vehicle. So it will um, increase our efficiency and our, it will be a good economical decision as well. Okay. Uh, could I get a motion to that effect, please? Motion by Alderman Fleury, second by Alderman Prather. Uh, any discussion regarding that? Good utilization, Chief, of uh, that vehicle, low mileage vehicle, for sure, the Ford F-350. Uh, so, any other questions, comments? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor then uh, will uh, we'll say aye. Aye. Thank you. 
<laughs> Any opposed? All right. Motion passed. Thank you. And item C, uh, we have Corpus Christi procession parade request. And um, that is a request. Um, it's for um, St. James Catholic Church. Uh, it's to be held Sunday, June 11th, 1 to 2 p.m. As the memo states, um, and uh, the route is uh, to be defined as they begin at 402 Church, they head west on Church Street, turn north on Main, turn east on Julian, turn south on Warren, turn west on again on Church, and they end back at 402 Church Street. Uh, could I get a motion to approve this route? Motion by Alderman Frank, second by Alderman McGee. Thank you. Uh, any questions, any comments regarding that? All right, hearing none, all, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. If there's any opposed, motion passed, thank you. And that is all we have on the agenda for this evening. Could I get a motion to adjourn, please? Motion by Alderman Frank, second by Alderman Albertini. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anybody want to stay? All right, motion passed. We're adjourned for the record at... 6.37 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.